Welcome back to Evangelism for God, the channel that speaks about issues the church run away from and expose Satan and his devices and anybody that's out there misleading God's people. My name is Maurice Braxton. And on this video right here, I want to make it clear. This is not an attack at Alan Parr. It's not an attack. I like Alan Parr. I'm subscribed to his channel. I think he's a great teacher. But he made a video yesterday that riled me up because I strongly disagree with what he's talking about. Because he made this video talking about three types of YouTube channels, you should uh, Christian channels, you should stay away from. And number two, he was talking about stay away from a channel that all they talk about is false calling out false prophets. And that was his number two. And I strongly disagree with that. This channel, we probably speak about it 85% of the time. The channel, because that wasn't the intentions of my channel to focus in on that. But the Lord led me down this path because I've got to start another channel where I where I intended to do separately now. Because he's led me down this path because it's shown me over the last several years that false teachings and prophets have been risen up so much by Satan himself that they are everywhere like never before. And he tried to go back and say, well, it wasn't done like this in the Bible, this and that. But he's got to understand we're in the last days now and the social media age has changed everything as it pertains to false teachings. I mean, these false teachers are running around doing seminars. They're going around doing so-called revivals and they're coming to a town near you. And they're out there everywhere. I'm, and I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, no. And there's millions and millions and millions of people being deceived. Now, I want you to stay to the end of the video because I'm going to share with you uh, right here as I look at my computer, five factors for calling out false teachers. According to uh, Desiring God, John Piper, many of you know John Piper, some agree, but he, one thing he does is he does not out. Uh, well, we won't get into John, but John Piper, for the most part, you know, he, he's solid for the most part, as far as I'm concerned. And he's got five factors for calling out false teachers when he talks about false teachings. And he talks about, goes through talking about in this particular podcast, and as I look at his transcripts over here, where he's talking about exposing evil, talking about uh, Paul telling Timothy and naming off the false prophets and stuff. See, because we know that you're supposed to confront someone and go, you know, uh, and, and, and front, confront them in front of the church and things. But we're in the social media age right now. You can't go and pull them off to the side and try to confront them with a couple of brethren to try to get them to stop. Because guess what? They're not stopping. And God has placed in my heart because it's personal to me false teachings is personal to me because my father was deceived and I was, he, I, he got murdered when I was four years old. And if it wasn't for that happening, I would have been raised up in a false religion that he was following and this deception. And he was, I would have been no telling how far I would have went down the dark road to where I might have had no chance to come out of that. And he lost his life by another person that was part of the false religion. And I got that testimony within my videos. But he was deceived. My father was deceived. So being deceived is personal for me. Being deceived when people are going out here and, and when you see videos like this, as, I'm go, as you see on the screen, Cat Kerr show up every Wednesday to talk to Steve Schultz and spread nonsense. These are millions and millions and millions of people that are following this stuff. Some are seeking truth. They may not come across Alan Parr's channel first. They may not come across some of the other Christian YouTubers or whatever that they come across to hear truth. Because we know that truth will over... Uh, supersede the darkness as in that's the how you can counter that but at the same time I've had people email me tell me I was trapped I was personally deceived thank you for you know, helping me wake up thank you my my family members are deceived I didn't know that this particular person you just mentioned I did not know that they're false teachings 
I thought that they were okay. I examined it. I studied it. I see that they are actually a false teacher. So I know the simple fact that people are coming to me, letting me know is confirmation from God that I'm where he wants me to be on YouTube. Everybody's got a niche on YouTube. And I think that Alan Parr is wrong in trying to take out the niches, this particular niche, within the Christian realm. Because right now, Satan is on a tear. He is on an all-time high. He's got these prof false prophets spread out everywhere. And he is so crafty. And we know he's crafty. He was crafty because he tricked Eve in the garden with craftiness. And he will he's doing that with babes in Christ. He's doing that with people that are seeking Christ. They're not converted yet. They're just seeking some type of truth. And he's deceiving them. And so what are you supposed to do? I mean, I was thinking like, you know, one of the biggest problems, especially in the uh, black community, but it's just everywhere, is the no snitching thing. They want you to stay quiet about a crime. People don't talk because uh, snitches get stitches is the same. So you have that in a lot of communities and it's very prevalent in the black community. They want you to be quiet. Don't nobody say nothing. And I've been saying it for years. One way to combat crime in your community is if everybody, everybody spoke up, regardless of what happens. I, you know what's going to happen? If everybody with every crime and they know what's going on, murderers or not, they speak up, it's going to put them on the run. It's going to put them on the defensive, the criminals, because they're going to know that they can't set up shop in a certain community. They're going to know that they can't do that. And they're going to sit there and be on the run. And that's how I feel about it when it comes to the ministry and feel about false teachings. I, I'm going to call it out. And anybody else out there that is out there teaching, calling it out, we need to put these false teachers on the run. We need to get them out. My pastor was strict when it came to somebody coming in and any of us that where they made sure when we taught Sunday school, made sure when Bible studies, made sure they would come in and make sure you are teaching theologically sound doctrine and you're not trying to mislead. And there was times when people would try to infiltrate the flock, but he was able to weed them out. And that's when he told me, never be afraid to speak the truth. Because he saw the boldness that was within me at that time. Never be afraid to speak the truth and, uh, uh, and step on toes. His word was walk heavy. That's what he would say. Walk heavy because the Lord has given you a, a boldness, a spirit of boldness. And that's what he's called me to do. I'm not doing it out of hate. I'm not doing it out of, you know, being spiteful. It's out of love because one thing that's burdened within my heart, I don't want to see nobody deceived. And on their way to hell. Because unfortunately, it's more than likely my father went to hell because he was following a false religion. And that's a messed up pill to swallow to know that. That he destined himself to hell because he was following a false religion. And I'm not going to sit up and be quiet and let people sit back and tell me to be quiet. And any of us, us, us out there that are sounding an alarm to be quiet and not warn people. They need to be warned. Now, let me finish. As I read here from this, and I'm going to put this link within my uh, the video here so you can go listen to it. So you can read it or whatever. So you can actually hear, because this is great. It's about 10 minutes. If you listen to it, you can go through the transcripts and read it. But let me finish here. Five factors, he says, are calling out false teachers. He says how, to, how and when and not the Bible calls for wisdom. He says that here's five factors to consider when deciding to name a false teacher publicly. The seriousness and deceitfulness of the era, which is at an all-time high right now. The size of the audience, is it growing? That's a huge one because of this, the way we are in the digital age is not like it used to be. 30, 40 years ago. I've been in the ministry over 25 years. It's not like that anymore. There, there's people with thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers. 
some of these channels I've watched over the last couple of years where they've just had a few thousand subscribers, now they're up to 100,000 subscribers. And people that are, oh, I'm so glad I found you. I found the truth. I'm so glad that I've come across your channel, you know, saying that about these false teachers. So it's growing. Number three, the duration of their ministry. Did they make one blunder or are they constantly doing it? You see, it's one thing. You know, you, one of the biggest things is, especially since Trump uh, with office here, a lot of them predicted that Trump was uh, going to be president because God told them so and stuff. Now, only a rarely a small, small number. There's the one pastor that repented on that and then he got death threats. There's other, there's only a small, minute number of people that's repented on st stating that. Others, they have stood their ground and they're still teaching the same message that it's getting ready to happen. They're adding to scripture. They're adding more and more to it. And you have that right there. Is Was it one blunder? Whatever they said, is it, oh, a mistake here? And then they repented and got back on track. That's a big factor to know. Because these, a lot of these people that I've seen, the false teachers I've seen, it's not one mistake. I mean, this thing is going on and on daily. You can't step back and let that happen to God's people and don't say nothing. So, and vulner and so number four is vulnerability of people for who, whom you're responsible. The vulnerability. They're taking advantage of these little lukewarm Christians. They're taking advantage of people that are out there seeking the truth. Because of the way that the algorithm is on the internet, they Alan Parr may not pop up they, uh, or whatever, and they may not have any interest in that. But it's a different interest when someone says, oh, they come across and they see a thumbnail that says, you know, this angel is watching you and guarding you and, and all of this stuff. You know, these little crazy uh, things that are unscriptural and they see that thumbnail, they're going to click on that. They're not going to click on uh, something possibly that's just a basic Bible teaching. You know, they're looking for something because we're so caught up in imagery and caught up in all of these different types of factors that will cause us to, you know, want to click, want to see what's going on with that. And number five, the role you have in influencing shepherds who really need to be discerning for who false teachers are. are. So, this is a great article, a great podcast to listen to that I think that it will be beneficial for everyone to see where I'm coming from. And once again, as I say, this is not an attack on Alan because I think that it, it balances out. You teach, Alan teach, you go through. I'm not, my, this channel and my next channel is not dedicated to just doing basically shepherding pastoral teachings basically, uh, you know, in ministry. That's not my, the channel that my intentions with this, this channel. So it balances out. You do the teaching. I add some teaching as the Lord gives it to me within my channel. But at the same time, I'm going to ring the bell. I'm going to sound the alarm and warn people. Do you know the king is coming? You need to repent before it's too late. You're following false doctrine and teaching. It's a warning. This person right here, you think that you're following is leading you on a path to hell. Don't become a victim like my father. Don't become a victim like my father who was deceived. And that's all I, you know, I, I want to get it clear to you guys out there. So that's all I have for this video. I'm going to continue. Like I said, I'm not worried about, as I always I say, my concern is not about trying to be some popular internet guru or whatever or think I know everything. I have a true burden for the lost. That's my concern. And then those that are within the body of Christ, my burden is, is to continue to uh, prop, help prop you up, but at the same time, give you encouragement to know, because I, I always tell people, you know, be... We stick together. We pray. We try to tear down these strongholds of these people that are being deceived. And we're going to stick together because there's some people that's been walking with me from the beginning as I started with this channel. And I'm thankful for you guys to continue to follow me. We'll continue to punch Satan right in between them chops and expose any trickery that he's out here trying to do. 
Evangelism for God's the channel. If you're new, consider hitting like, subscribe, come along for the journey because we're going to continue to give God the glory. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.